Chapter 7. A New Career Helen and Annie went to live in Rentham, near Boston. John Macy still came to see them often. On one bright May afternoon, Helen stood beside teacher as Anne Sullivan and John Macy were married. Helen was very happy about the marriage. Annie and John lived in Rentham with her. Now the three planned to work together. Helen wanted to pass on the gift of teaching that Annie had given her. But at last she decided she could work best by writing and lecturing. I can tell more people about the special training that deaf and blind children need, she told Annie. I can teach them what you taught me, that children must not be different because they are blind or deaf. They can learn to work and be happy. Before she began to lecture, Helen took more voice lessons. She practiced for many hours so that people could understand her speeches. During the next years, Helen and Annie lectured to big audiences all over the country. Traveling on trains and meeting thousands of strangers was hard work, but they were happy when they saw new schools being started and new organizations to help educate the blind and deaf. Helen wrote books and articles for magazines. After each long trip, she was happy to come home to Rentham. She always went first to the garden and put her arms around her favorite trees. Her great Dane dog and the puppies barked their welcome. Helen and Annie rode horseback over the country trails. She and Annie and John spent long evenings by the fire with their friends. Helen had always worked to get more books printed in Braille. She knew that many blind people did not have enough books to read. She went to Washington to ask people in the government to help. In 1913, there is important news. The National Library for the Blind was started. Helen and Annie went to Washington again. President Taft of the United States opened the new library. Later, Helen met President Taft again. He came to New York to open the first lighthouse for the blind. Helen made a speech. She welcomed the new group that would work for the blind. That night, when they had supper by the fire, Helen smiled. We started long ago with Tommy Stringer, she told Annie. We have traveled until our bones ache. We have talked ourselves hoarse to tell people that blind and deaf children need special schools. People have listened. Now some of our dreams are coming true. A few years later, trouble came. Annie was ill. Her marriage with John Macy became unhappy. When John left Rentham, Annie and Helen missed him sadly. At the time, Helen's work grew so heavy that she and Annie needed more help. A young Scottish girl named Polly Thompson came to live with them. Polly was quick and sensible and jolly. She could cook and give dogs baths. She helped Helen with writing and reading to rest Annie's eyes. Without John's help, the house in Rentham was too expensive for Helen to keep. She was sad to leave the home she had loved. We can take the dogs with us, she said, but we will miss the garden. They moved to a smaller house in Forest Hills in a borough of Queens in New York City. Soon Helen was working hard on a new book. 